Hi and welcome to this SciFinder tutorial. In order to use SciFinder you will first have to register. Go to the KTH library homepage, click on databases and write SciFinder. At the top you will have the actual database but if this is your first time go to SciFinder registration. Fill in the information. It's possible that you will have to do this from a KTH IP address if you want this to work. In any case, once you use SciFinder, you will have to do it from a KTH IP address. Once you've logged into SciFinder, you have three main tabs. Explore References, Explore Substances, and Explore Reactions. Explore References is useful for searching for a concept or a subject. Let's look for uh, articles on activated sludge. And I should add that this will not only be journal articles, it will also be patents and similar things. We get almost 50,000 hits. And here is a, well, we could call it a feature of SciFinder, but it's not a very nice feature. A lot of things in SciFinder don't work if you, if get, you get more, more than, than 10,000 10, hits. hits. They have a 10,000 hit limit, limit. So, down to 10,000 hits, or do a more narrow search from the start. SciFinder is designed to use normal sentences when asking questions. However, you can also use normal words and Boolean operators. We'll also search for bioreactors. This is less than 10,000 answers and it contains both of the concepts that I want. Now we can actually start using the database. Although the interface has some annoying limitations, the databases behind the interface are very good. For the references, the two main databases are CA Plus and Medline. There will of course be some duplicate references. Let's remove those by going to Tools and Remove Duplicates. This can also be done automatically for each search through the preferences up here. Our results can be sorted in a few different ways. Publication year, title, author name and so on. Our results can also be analyzed. Well, author name Cost registry number, this is related to the substances that are present in the articles. The indexing terms is what we'll use if we want to keep only articles with certain keywords. Let's do that now. Let's say I only want to keep articles with which has articles that have bioreactors as database keywords. If I want to go further with this analysis I should press keep analysis. Attached to both CA plus and Medline there is a thesaurus. Unfortunately Unlike other quality interfaces to databases with thesauruses, you are not able to access the actual thesaurus from the SciFinder interface. This means that you will have now to look like through to look all at the indexing terms or know the terms in advance. For instance, the oxygen consumption in these processes. I know that there will be indexing terms for this and they are chemical oxygen demand, biochemical oxygen demand, these are the two CA plus terms and for Medline it will be oxygen consumption. Let's find these terms. Click show more and instead of sorting them by frequency let's sort them by natural order. Unfortunately you will have to click through these in order to get to what you want. Ignore the terms with a star here. Look at our Medline tutorial if you want to know what these are about. Here is the oxygen consumption chemical oxygen demand and biochemical oxygen demand. Click apply after marking all of them and then keep analysis. To make things simpler for you you could also analyze by for instance document type. Here you see that we have four review articles. You could do the same thing for language for instance to make sure that you only pick articles in languages that you can actually read. To export a citation to EndNote Mark the articles that you want, 
go to export and choose the citation export format, the RIS format. Now let's search for a substance. As in our Reaxis tutorial, we'll search for ethyl propionate. Go to the Explore Substances tab. And now we have several different options for searching. We can search for the chemical structure, we can search for or molecular formula, number. or we can search using substance identifier, for instance the name. These are rather simple, so let's concentrate on the chemical structure. For searching for a specific substance, the most important thing is to make sure that you mark exact search over here. You draw with the pencil tool, if you do a mistake here is the eraser. Select the type of atom you want, either from the shortcuts down here, or from the periodic system up here. Mouse button, drag and drop. If you would need to attach some functional groups, we have a bunch of them over here. For rings, we can go here. Okay, let's search. Make sure also that you're searching for a structure and not for a reaction or a Marcouche structure. The answers can be a bit confusing. You see, oh, but why do we have this? I just want the structure I search for. You can solve this by sorting it by number of references instead, then you'll get the most common compounds at the top. This is the compound we searched for. Here we can see the number of references to it. We can go directly to reactions or substance detail. Here we can find more names for it. We can find predicted properties, which is most of the time not what you actually want. It works fine for some properties, but uh, for others you'll want the experimental properties. You can also click here. For instance, if you want to see directly how to synthesize this, where the substance is a reactant, you can get to that very quickly. Now let's search for a specific reaction. Go to explore reactions and draw the reactants and draw the products. The best way to draw the reaction is by using reaction rolls instead of just using the reaction arrow. Click here and then click one by one the reactants and the product. For reactants quite often it's better to use reactant slash regent if you don't really know if it's a reactant or a regent. And for the product of course use the product. Make sure that you have variable only at the specified positions and reaction up here. Click OK and search. You can analyze your reactions in several ways, by catalyst, or by product yield, number of steps, and several other ways. Here we can get the reactions with 90 or more percent in yield. Note that you can go from a reaction to the substance by hovering with the mouse over a substance, clicking, and if you want to see the substance details for this, we just click here. Let's summarize. In SciFinder you can do text searching, you can search for substances, and you can search for reactions. It's also easy to go between reaction searching and substance searching. Always remember to use the analyzing tools to refine your search. And why use SciFinder? Well, the databases behind the interfaces are the best on the market. They have more references than any other chemical database, and they also have more substances than any other database. Having problems? Ask at the library or take an information searching course. You can visit our homepage for more information.